But we begin now with Russia's intensifying invasion of Ukraine. Kyiv residents are dealing with another night of sheltering as Russian troops close in on Ukraine's capital. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky again made an appeal for more Western help and vowed to remain in Ukraine and continue fighting the Russian assault. Meanwhile, the mayor of Kyiv extended the city's curfew to run until 8 a.m. on Monday. Ukrainian authorities are accusing Russian forces of targeting civilians, but Moscow continues to deny the claims. Ukraine's health minister reported Saturday 198 people, including three children, had been killed. And more than 1,000 others have been wounded since the start of the invasion. It's unclear if those figures included both military and civilian casualties. Joining us with more from Ukraine is CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams. <clears throat> Holly, the fighting came very close to your crew while filming in a hospital. Tell us all what happened. Lana, what's really stunning is that, you know, three days ago, Kiev was a prosperous, bustling European capital. And now, quite simply, it is a war zone. Uh, the Russians claim that they're not targeting civilians, but the Ukrainians say that they're actually firing indiscriminately. And this morning, not far from where we were, where we were staying, an apartment building, a residential complex was hit by rocket fire. Uh, miraculously, it seems that no one was killed, but several people were injured. We were on the scene shortly after that. There was smoke billowing. But we were actually headed to a nearby hospital. As you say, it's a private hospital, but they have cancelled all their elective surgeries and sent many of their non-critical patients home because they're turning themselves into a combat hospital. But just as we were arriving, uh, street fighting broke out. You no, know, there was gunfire very close by, perhaps three blocks away, perhaps even closer. At one point, we thought that we were going to be pinned down. Luckily, it eventually uh, moved in a different direction. We then spoke with some of the, the doctors and nurses in the hospital. Um, they said that they had not slept for three days. And one of the doctors said that she was going to stay in her country doing her work even if it means dying there. That determination we have seen from all different levels of Ukrainian society. And then, Holly, uh, after that hospital, your crew moved across western Ukraine. Tell us, what have you seen? Yeah, we drove west from Kiev today, and it was really fascinating. Uh, first of all, we saw helicopters, military helicopters flying above. Uh, we still don't know if they were, were Russian choppers or, or Ukrainian. But what we came across time and time again were checkpoints, where they were checking every single car. Now, that's not surprising. This is a country that's now at war. But most of those checkpoints were not military. They were not police. They were local volunteers and reservists wearing armbands, carrying guns that, that looked to be their own. They're very clearly uh, trying to stop Russian saboteurs uh, mm. from moving into the area. And there is an air of just grim determination. You know, we've been covering this country for years. Uh, and the last few months, many Ukrainians have told us that they're willing to die to protect their country from a Russian invasion. Uh, people who are not in the military have said that to us. And now it turns out, I think, that they've been deadly serious. All right. Holly, stay safe. Thank you.